For those of you who don't know how a Catholic baptism works, it starts with a circumcision. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Cradle and Convert. I'm Andrew. And I'm Weston. Before we get into our topics, we'd like to remind you to subscribe to our channel, but more importantly, hit that button down there that's the little bell that reminds you of when videos are. I've gotten so many complaints from people that are like, YouTube never tells me when these videos pop up. I didn't realize this till I actually looked it up. YouTube no longer tells subscribers that our videos are out. Apparently it's a YouTube wide problem. Way Hopefully to go, YouTube. they fix it or change it back. Yes. What are the sacraments, really? The sacraments are nothing more than the visible sign of the hidden reality of salvation. Case in point, they're an outward appearance of God's grace. Simple, straight, to the point. Now, we have to remember, too, that these sacraments of grace apply restricted towards us, not towards God. God does not have to just work through the sacraments. He can also work outside them. Case in point, a lot of people, or I should say some, I don't know a whole lot, but believe that if you're not baptized, you lose all chance of being saved by God and going to heaven. This is not true. Nowhere in the catechism, the Catholic Church, or anywhere in the Catholic teaching does this, it actually say that. In fact, we almost say the opposite. If a child is actually born before they are, or uh, dies before they are baptized, or if somebody who is going on their way to baptism, is uh, killed. It does not make their future baptism invalid. In fact, it's, it's up to God to choose whether or not they would go through it mm -hmm. and what they lived as a holy life. Right. So what is baptism? So that's when we first enter into the family of God. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Mm. So we get divinely adopted by Christ and uh, baptized into his life, death, and resurrection. Right. So this is done by submerging. Submerge! <laughs> Don't that, baby! <laughs> or getting water poured onto your head. <laughs> Don't kill babies. <laughs> and uh, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That wording is very specific and important. Can't deviate from it. Why, Andrew? That's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus said. That's good enough for me. Yep. Actually, it's Matthew 28. Anyways, so where was I? Okay, you You're can only there. get baptized once, okay? So this is a one-time deal. And generally, you know, as a Catholics, we do this as, uh, we'll, we baptize them as infants. That's what I was trying to say. Generally, we're getting baptized as an infant. Um, so in paragraph 1213 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, it says, Holy baptism is the basis of the whole Christian life. The gateway to life in the spirit and the door which gives access to the other sacraments. Through baptism, we are freed from sin, reborn as sons of God. We become members of Christ and are incorporated into the church and made sharers in her mission. Baptism is the sacrament of regeneration through water in the word. So this is seen in John 3, 5, when Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus. And Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you are one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And so we see this in the Old Testament prior to that through a lot of the different stories, right? Where people are, the Israelites are saved through water and spirit, right? Noah uh, in the ark, the, the Moses and the Israelites in the Red Sea, parting the Red Sea, mm -hmm. and many other times, right? Yeah. And so Catholic churches and a lot of organized Christian religions believe that it is not only okay, but encouraged to baptize infants. Now, there are other people, other Christian denominations, that don't believe that this is true. Uh, generally, uh, they refer to themselves as born-again Christians. What, what is the understanding that has been proposed to us through the same people that we actually talked to about the Faith and Works episode? Uh, they told us that because a child is not mentally aware, they're not cognitive of what they are doing, that their baptism is therefore invalid, that they need to be rebaptized fully uh subscribing basically to that baptism. However, this is not biblical uh, or historical. In fact, it's actually reverse in Luke 18, 4, 15 through 17. It states, now they were bringing even infants to him that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they rebuked him. 
But Jesus called them to him, saying, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. This is also reflected in Matthew 19, 13 through 14, and Mark 13 through 16. This again, uh, this idea of infants is again emphasized earlier in Mark 18, 1 through 14, where Jesus puts a child between amongst the disciples and tells them, uh, basically, you must become like a child to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And then he states in 14, so it is not the will of my father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. So what is this doing? This is encouraging us to bring our children to be baptized, to uh, enter into Christ's body, and to not hinder them. To make sure that even though at that moment they may not be fully understanding what they are doing, that that sanctifying grace still does apply to them. Right, exactly. So where does this come from? Um, so in Colossians 2, 11 to 12, St. Paul talks a lot about baptism, right, throughout the yeah. entire Old Test or New Testament, right? So there specifically he says baptism is the circumcision of Christ, right? And so he's basically saying <laughs> that uh, circumcision is, or baptism is the fulfillment of circumcision, right? So circumcision didn't come or bring the sanctifying grace that comes about with baptism, but, you know, that was the, so baptism was the fulfillment of that. <laughs> so there was some discrepancy in this in the in the early church, right? In the year 254 AD, some pe early Christians, mm -hmm. being from the Jewish tradition, right, were like, well, we should baptize them on the eighth day after they were born, right? Because that's when the baby was circumcised mm -hmm. back at that time, too. So St. Pope Stephen uh, talks about this, and he says, no, it, it doesn't matter. Like, just baptize them as soon as possible. Don't need to wait the eight days. Just baptize them as soon as you can. Yep. Yeah. And thank God we're not Jewish. No more need to nip that tip. And nip the tip. Oh, wow. But anyways, for those of you that don't know how a Catholic baptism goes, I'm actually very blessed in the fact that I just had my son baptized uh, at the end of February. So the way the baptism normally goes is that you actually find a Catholic sponsor. And the, the timing of the baptism goes be anywhere between a month to a week to even the day of, depending on the circumstances. Most times it's dire circumstances when you have it on the day of. Mm -hmm. But when you have your sponsors, you're generally known as the godfather and godmother. Uh, you either have them hold the child or you're holding the child, depending on what the priest says. And you start outside of the church. And the priest asks a question that is, what is your name? Now, most people are supposed to answer the child's name. However, in the rare funny <laughs> occasions, the sponsor answers their own name, <laughs> like mine. <laughs> Love you, dude. <laughs> Anyways, so they, they answer the child's name, then you process into the church, and then you go through, and the priest, uh, depending on which rite you're a part of, there's the new rite, and there's the old rite. We had our son baptized in the old rite, in which case there's three exorcisms. I was a Lutheran, and I have red hair. Three exorcisms, was needed. <laughs> Gotta be thorough. <laughs> That's right. Make sure that baby's clean. Clean for Jesus. Uh, and then we wash away the sins and we give them a nice buffer and wax with chrism oil. <laughs> Which smells awesome. That's true. Anyways, inside, the sponsors are asked on behalf of the child for the faith, a series of questions known as the baptismal promises. Generally, they start off with something like, do you rebuke Satan and all of his works? The sponsors either answer yes or I do, depending on what the priest says. So at the last part, the child is then placed above the baptismal font, and then the priest, using a cup or his hand, takes the water and baptizes in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then the child is baptized. And at the end of it, you're going to have three things that you're going to walk away from. You're going to have the baptismal candle, which is generally lit by the Easter candle. Then there is going to be your baptismal cloth, which is a signification. Normally you are buried with it. Uh, it appears uh, above your casket at your funeral. This is to signify your baptism. And it is something that uh, to some believe that you actually take it before Christ and you show them the uh, whiteness of the cloth, showing the purity. Oh. And then there's your baptismal gown. Now, none of these are to be reused. So no. None. So oh. if you have 13 kids, you have 13 baptismal cloths, 13 candles, 
and you're missing one gown. Because how can you keep track of all those? Yeah, you've got 13 kids. We totally understand. I'm pretty sure Jesus is going to understand. <laughs> and when the argument comes up, the fact that, you know, the kid didn't fully understand what was going on, so therefore the baptismal is not valid. What they don't understand is that each year at the vigil, we actually renew those same baptismal promises. This is the Easter vigil, by the way. Mm-hmm. This, uh, those baptismal promises. In which we are, again, sprinkled with holy water, and we answer those series of baptismal questions. So, not only that, but we are also called out every day to live out our baptismal promises. Right. It's not a one-time thing. You know, the initial one time is the start of it, but you're, it's a follow-through. You are called to keep answering those prayers. Mm-hmm. Well, and to remember, baptism, like I said before, was being baptized in the Christ's life, death, and resurrection. Yeah. It includes all of that. Every day. All day. Yep. All day, every day. <laughs> well, thank you so much, everybody. Don't forget to not only hit that subscribe button, but also the reminder button. Like us. Comment. But most importantly of all. Pray. <laughs>